In the late 1880s, smokeless powder rifles were still new and hadn't quite yet been standardized. One unique feature that was adopted on only three rifles and then quickly forgotten was the barrel jacket. In response to the French label, Germany formed a commission and eventually adopted the Gewehr 88 as its main infantry rifle. One member of the commission who submitted two trials rifles was a man by the name of Armand Meig. Though his rifles weren't adopted, one feature of his to make its way onto the final rifle was the barrel jacket. The Gewehr 88 as seen here was adopted in 1888. The next year saw the adoption of two more rifles featuring barrel jackets. The Danish Krag Jorgensen on top and the Belgian Mauser 1889 on the bottom. This one is a carbine, however the long rifle originally adopted had a barrel jacket as well. On a rifle, a barrel jacket is a steel tube covering the barrel from chamber to muzzle. It serves two purposes. Both involve managing heat. When a rifle is shot often, the barrel gets hot. This impacts the person firing it, making it unpleasant to hold while shooting, and also while using with the bayonet with the hands gripping near the muzzle. But also the barrel getting hot can impact accuracy. Steel expands as it heats up and it needs room to do so. The barrel jacket not only insulates the hands, it gives room and support for the barrel to expand. So if the barrel jacket controls heat well, why wasn't it used on more rifles? The biggest negative seems to be durability. Since it extends the full length of the barrel, weight and balance are a concern. Therefore, the barrel jackets were made from comparatively thin steel tubing. As such, denting was a concern, as seen here, and here, and here. And with the sights mounted on the barrel jackets, an impact large enough to cause a dent near the sights can impact the alignment and the aim. The empty area between the barrel and the jacket caused water to be trapped, leading to rust on both the barrel and the thin-walled barrel jacket. Heat expansion of the barrels was solved by the Mauser brothers and their stuffed barrels, which would expand in a more predictable manner and not interfere with the stock fitment. As for the problem of holding the rifle with a hot barrel, just throw in a handguard. And with that, barrel jackets weren't used on any later rifles and quickly faded into obscurity. Germany, with its imperialistic ambitions, replaced the Gewehr 88 with the Mauser 98 only 10 years into its service life. The other two countries didn't have the military budget of Germany, and these rifles saw further use. Belgium started modifying their long rifles into the carbine pattern as seen here in 1916, and replaced it with a Mauser 98 type without a barrel jacket in 1935. Denmark produced a jacketless barreled Krag carbine in low numbers starting in 1913. However, this rifle here, as well as a shortened version, served as their main rifle through the end of World War II.